All right, welcome back to part four of Deadly Premonition. You can also see me struggling to drive, but uh, here's a good way to start off an episode. Here's Zach and York talking. Now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course, that's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 1986, directed by John Hughes. <laughs> that one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know, but you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerly. Now that was an impressive film. We've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? You remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words the end was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. All right, with that done, uh, I decided to let George and Emily go ahead so I could save, try to collect some cards on the way here. Could not, but I'm glad I switched to the SUV vehicle because I'm almost out of gas. Well, I'm half, half a tank, but I didn't want to fill up. Us waiting. Is this the way the FBI treats their own people? Hello, George. I just had some things I had to do. You really are pushing it, you know that? I'm sorry if I upset you, but it was important stuff. To me, at least. That isn't the issue here. We are in the middle of a homicide investigation. He's not listening, George. I think we both know by now how little he thinks of other people's feelings. I'll be more careful than that. I promise. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. And you are Jim Green? That I am, son. I keep these woods. Well, you're doing a fine job. Well, I used to be a tree surgeon. And these two discovered the body? Yes, my grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. Zach, you see that? Twins, just like in my dream. We gotta keep an eye on these two. I'm sorry, could we talk away from the boys? I wanna help your investigation, but I don't want them to hear this. Very well. Emily, please. I'll just take them over there then. Thank you. Hold on, don't do anything without asking me. These children were the first to witness the crime scene. I want to talk to them. Come on, they're just kids. They have no idea what really happened to Anna. That doesn't matter. You agree with me, right, Zach? How heartless. Do you ever think of other people's feelings, ever? Emily's right. That's stone cold, even for the sake of investigation. Children see things in pure, simple terms. They may have seen something we adults would never spot, and they are here at our request as well. We could at least chat with them and see if they want to make a statement. Are you serious? I never joke about matters like this. Oh my god. Don't worry. They aren't as fragile as you think. Look at them, standing so upright there. Now then, Isaac, Isaiah, tell me, what did you find here? Anna. She was so pretty. She had a red dress on. Her hair was shining. Bright gold hair. There were lots of animals around her. Squirrel, weasel, and a snake. A real snake. We didn't know until then. But we know now. Anna 
was the fairy of the forest. She was a goddess. She smiled when she saw us. She looked so happy. That's right, Isaac. Isaiah, she was a fairy, a goddess. I'm sure she is playing with those animals even now. Of course she is. Yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, oh, oh. Information, boys. Well, Emily, you can take them now. Okay, Zach. This is where Anna's body was. And that means our unsub, our unknown subject, was here too. So, what happened here? Profile start, baby. Zach, something is still missing. We need more clues. Let's get those clues. All right. I got a little FBI raincoat. This is the raincoat the FBI gave me. <gasps> Can of pickles, the best clue. You got a picture of a vest with holes. I'm not going to do a profile for each, each item, given that this is a small enclosed area. So there's not really uh, that many clues in this area. the music down I just don't know why it's, it's still so loud uh, all right you got chip with rusted metal dust all right two more clues one I'm probably missing. One very apparent clue. Let's check back over here real quick. <gasps> Another can of pickles. That's two clues. Two pickles, two clues. Alright there, George. There is it. No! Can't see my reticle at all. Which shocks. Is this a clue or a card? Missing piece of pin heel shoe. We'll profile on this one. Just in case if it triggers for the next one. Which I don't know if it will.
All right. Let's take a nap in the middle of an investigation. Huh? Right, not that way. Where to? Where to? More pickles. Did I just find the unlimited supply of pickle can can pickles? All right. That is blue, so that's probably the card. And then we'll check the main tree once we're done. Onagram, card number three. I think card number one and two is York and Zach. There it is. He kneeled down as, as if to pray. He was worshipping her. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's upside down. I guess this is meant to be an anti-peace sentiment then. These holes on the ground were made by uh, high stiletto heels all around here. And this depression here, Agent Morgan, I see what happened here. He hung her from the tree and put on her shoes. He was really enjoying it. Sicko. Note down. And disgusting. George, you certainly have a vivid imagination. An interesting theory. Don't you think, Zach? What was his name again? That Hollywood producer. That's right. Joel. We really ought to introduce George to him, Zach. Profiling is a little different from writing a screenplay, though. An idea being interesting doesn't make it fact. Let me enlighten you, George. The footprints reveal that one of the heels were missing from the shoes. And they're different from Anna's shoes that we saw at the office. Furthermore, there would be even more disgusting evidence if he did kneel and, well, do as you suggested. If you want proof, go ahead and try it for yourself. He knelt here for a reason other than simple perversion. Zack. What was he doing in front of Anna? said. She was a goddess. The unsub, or unknown subject, offered prayers to her as body. It's bitten out the tongue of the massive body. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who dismissed stiletto heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took 
whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark, then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane the owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore. With either a it's about to go dark. metal or metal machinery or something like that. The, the old, old lumber, lumber mill. And it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? Protecting the boys. No. The Neo games. Far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure, though. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this. Love. I will say this though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well then, everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence, and carefully figure the unsub's M.O. Modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me. Alright, I went on trusty old Reddit for, uh, some sound settings so it's not absolutely insane. So 60. Let's go 84. He had 90, but let's go 85. I got unlimited gas because those guys are in the car. Nice. Let's turn on my wipers. The reason I was I switched to third person driving is so I can see where I turn. And it's easier to see the the marker. When I first joined the force, this lumber mill was still in full swing. It closed up right when I first moved here. And now it's totally abandoned. I presume so. I've never really been inside, so I don't know for sure, but it sure is run down. Deserted buildings are perfect for criminal hideouts and activities. I keep telling Harry to have the place torn down. Probably. After all, it's already been used as the site of Anna's murder. You don't know that for sure yet, Agent Morgan. Well, that's right, from your point of view. But the perpetrator selected the lumber. Agent York, you seem very confident about this. Confident? Confidence is a sweet spot between 
and rude and hopeless. I'm just drawing natural conclusions from the facts that we've seen. That sounds exactly like being full of confidence, at least to me, and to normal people with common sense. Common sense can be the opposite of facts sometimes. Bear that in mind. Oh, I will, Agent York. Thank you for another pearl of wisdom. Either way, we'll know for sure by simply going to the lumber mill. So keep your pearls of wisdom to yourself, and let's hurry. Well said, George. Can you step on it, Agent York? Bitch, I'm going. <laughs> As fast as I can. So fun, not fun, but weird fact is the horn button is the same as the look behind you button. Well, no. what are you? Can't get out of the car. Oh. Fudge Muppets. Hold up, maybe, maybe. Nah. Well, let me. Out. All right. But the look behind you button and the horn button are the same thing. So the honk your horn. You do it once, and the camera swaps, which is crazy. Also, I have the siren on because. See on the speedometer, I go a little bit faster. Actually, maybe not. I thought I did. Maybe it's a placebo. Makes it think I'm going faster. Let's go. Find out if your facts can be trusted. You're full of confidence, right? Let's get to the lumber mill. I don't know why they're questioning it. Literally, she had pieces of the lumber mill on her person. It's one of the race mini games over there. Correct route. Oh. <laughs> I sure hope it is. Siren also takes up stamina. Didn't notice that. I'm going in alone. You two stay here. I can't concentrate on profiling with other people around me. Now hold on a minute. We're investigating this case together. Listen, I can't risk the crime scene being compromised by you two. What are you saying? You're not the only professional law enforcement officer here, Agent Morgan. We know how to secure a crime scene. I'm sorry. That was... But this is how I operate. Furthermore... Yes? Furthermore what? To me, the outsider FBI agent, every citizen of this town is a suspect. You two could be in on this whole thing for all I know. I have to keep suspects out of the crime scene. How can you say such a thing? Is he making fun of us? We should have left him behind and come here by ourselves. You're right. I've never been so insulted. Sorry, but I'm just doing my job. I've never been so insulted. All right. That, Zach? If they're pros, then we should let every first-person shooter gamer out there join the SWAT team. Zing. Zach, they're here. Here it goes. This is amateur hour, alright? Alright, let's do actually. This would be a good stopping point. Alright. I will catch you all on the next one. Hopefully everything is sounding crisp and clear for you guys. Alright, like, comment, and subscribe. See you on episode 5.